welcome to another episode of the Pinnacle Mindset Show. I'm your host today, um, Sophie, and I'm joined with Lauren Quigley. Lauren, welcome. Hello, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's a right. pleasure to be here. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know, Lauren is a former Team GB swimmer, um, competed at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, um amongst worlds and various meets lauren what how did you get into swimming um it's quite a funny start really because my my auntie swam at the olympics and my mum swam for great britain as well and my mum did not want me to swim um she sort of did the journey herself (laughs) and knew it was pretty tough it was a pretty tough journey to do and just sort of wanted me to try every other um sport other than swimming so they did she did actually do that my mum and dad put me into literally everything when it was summer uh, out of school we'd be doing all the different sports and camps and everything like that and um I just loved it so much and used to go and watch my mum train because she still swam a bit and used to walk up and down with her coach and watch her swim and then uh and just loved it and wanted to be in all the time so I just naturally carried on and then obviously when she realized it was something I really wanted to do she uh she supported me wholeheartedly but up until that point she was like no maybe try a different sport um so yeah so that was my start into swimming that's absolutely adorable I've just got visions of like a little like Lauren like running up and down poolside that is so (laughs) so for anybody not knowing who you are what would you say was the highlight of your career Oh, uh, good question. I I have a couple that stand out. Um, I think the the last day of the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow for the swimmers, uh, that was a pretty special evening because that's where I got my 50 back silver medal. Um, and Georgia and I went the fastest times in the world that year. For, so one and two in the world, which is really special. And then later that evening, we did the four by one medley relay as well and got a silver in that so I got two silvers in one day which was incredible feeling um and then the second one would have to be the world championships in Kazan 2015 where I had tried for years and years and years to break the minute on the 100 backstroke and I'd even gone so close to as a minute point zero one oh man um, <laughs> at the Commonwealth Games trials actually and um and yeah I was just I was, I was in the semi-final for the 100 back and I just remember standing in the call room before I walked out thinking, do you know what? I don't care about the minute anymore. I just want to go out and have fun and nail all of the the processes that I need to nail in this race. And yeah, just had a great time with the girls in the call room and swam, loved it, focused on each point and broke, managed to break the minute. And uh, yeah, it was a really special day because it was I'd made the final as well um so I'd got out and I, I was semi-final one so Sharon Davis was interviewing me whilst the second semi-final was happening and halfway through the interview she was like you've made it in you've made it in um and I was just stood there like on tv like what do I do now <laughs> um, and so that was special and I looked up and saw my mum and dad in the crowd with the GB flag they were like right at the top um and yeah it was just a really special day so uh, I think that's got to be up there as well that's amazing and the thing is you you hear so many swimmers saying that they were going after a certain time um and it was only when they started having fun that they actually broke the time um do you think that was like a massive part of actually going sub 60 100 percent, yeah i um definitely believe that and and whenever i talk to younger athletes now i explain that story um and I'm sure they're all bored of hearing it now, but it's it's so true. It's like for five years, I was so focused on a minute, a minute, a minute. Well, 59, 59, 59. Um, and then as soon as I sort of just relaxed and just thought, you're just getting too caught with this whole minute. Um, I broke it three times in one week then. <laughs> and it just became like something that I could just do because I was so chilled about it. Yeah. So definitely there's a... I mean, it's so mental racing. It's, you know, all the physical stuff's pretty much done. It's, it's a big percentage mental. And, and when you sort of switch that on, it's, it becomes so much different, so much better. Yeah. And swimming is 100% one of those sports where you just have to be relaxed. 
um otherwise it's just not gonna go your way um so obviously these are amazing highlights what would you say was the biggest challenge of your career that's a very good question <laughs> um i mean there's like i always say and and whenever we chat we always discuss how much of a roller coaster uh swimming journey is i'm sure it's the same in every sport but obviously we're talking swimming and and it is it's a real roller coaster and and so there's a few moments that were really low and really i really struggled with um i think the lowest <clears throat> the lowest moment or the lowest sort of period in my career was after the 2016 olympic trials for um, rio mm -hmm. i didn't make the team i missed out by point something um and i'd got to a point where i was I was, don't get me wrong, I was devastated that I didn't make the Olympic team. You know, I'd always wanted to make it. And, and everyone had always said since I was in primary school, you'll go to the Olympics, you'll go to the Olympics. Um, and I think it was, the worst thing for me was I got to a point where I hated the sport that I'd, I'd always loved my whole life. And it was, it was a really challenging time because, like I said, it, the Olympic team was, was one thing, but um, the, it was it was much deeper than that. It was like uh, losing the love for for something that had been so special in my life and got me places and got me relationships and friendships and and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then it was just it was something that I hated and wanted to get away from and never wanted to have anything to do with again. And that's that's really tough to get your your head around. I think so. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah, I can imagine. Um... Obviously, I've never had that amount of pressure, but I can imagine the pressure is like overwhelming. Um, would you say that that took a massive toll on your mental health or? Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Of course, I um, I didn't come out of my room for a long time after that. Um, I just stayed in there and didn't really want to face anyone, really, because like I said before, everyone had in in a in a supportive way mentioned the olympics and and really you know wanted me to go thought i could go and all that sort of stuff and and physically i probably could have gone but mentally i was just not in the place to do it and and like we've just said it's such a mental game that if that's not in action and working at its best it's not going to happen um and so after yeah i i was in my room i was uh, depressed for a, for a while and it it was a, it was a really difficult time, not just for me, but for everyone around me, especially those closest to me. But again, I've got such great people around me that eventually in my own time, not being rushed, but also being supported. I came out of that and now love swimming again and, you know, want, don't ever want to have any part of my life without it. Um, but yes, it was a really difficult time and it's scary the amount of athletes that go through those low points and don't mention anything to be honest yeah 100 percent. i totally agree with you on that and it's so interesting because obviously i mean i own i've only just met you really um and as a kid growing up i used to see so many pictures of you just smiling and never even thought that you had like any down points and i think that that's the problem with the media at the moment would you agree on that yeah, I would. Um, I actually did a post the other day that I sort of was looking at my own feed and thought with Quigley Sport, I've, I've gone into the, the whole roller coaster of a, of a sporting journey because of partly because of the absence of the honesty. Mm -hmm. um, and then I looked at my own personal profile and it's all every pitch is smiling, laughing, joking, you know, everything's fantastic. And, and there's, there's, of course, there's a balance. People don't go to social media to see negative, but there, do, there does need to be more realistic posts, I think, out there of like, yeah. actually, no, I'm not all right. And it's becoming, it's a lot better now. There's a lot more people posting like that. Um, but yeah, I was always, the, part of my problem, I think, in 2016 was I kept it in, I kept everything in, and I didn't show any signs of being down before the trials. Um, I was, I felt like I was really good at putting a face on, and like you said, we've only just met, but 
um, I was always the joker, the one making everyone else laugh, making everyone feel good. And I loved it. You know, I wouldn't change it for the world. It was in the core room. Like I say, I was laughing, joking. Mm -hmm. When I retired, everyone was probably more upset. I wasn't going to be in the core room than actually racing. Um, which is a nice thing, I think, but yeah, I was always, uh, you know, trying to, trying to keep it in, make sure everyone else is okay. And I think, I always think maybe if I'd have spoke about it sooner, I might have not gone into such a big depression mm -hmm. afterwards. Uh, who knows, you know, hindsight's yeah. a great thing, but, um, but there definitely needs to be people more open about the roller coaster of a sporting journey, I think. So see when you were really struggling um, and you had those days where you didn't leave your room, how much psychological support did you get from UK sport, British swimming, etc.? I mean, that's a tough topic because um, none, really. Um, I, my, again, lucky for myself, I had a, have a great family around me, mum, dad, brother, cousins, auntie, you know, I have, I had a great coach uh, who approached me afterwards. Um, I had a, I've got a coach from my home club who was supportive all the way through as well, Kevin Nuttall. Um, and all these people around me helped me get through, but I worry for the people that maybe don't necessarily have that circle. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's a really interesting time because at the trials I stayed after my 100 backstroke because my, I think my brother was still racing um, and so I was around I was around the pool and stuff and I, don't get me wrong it's the last place I wanted to be but I would not miss mm -hmm. supporting my brother for the world so I was going to be there and it's really interesting because people don't come up and talk to you like they normally would and like I said before I was the joker and the one that was making everyone laugh so people normally came and just had a laugh with me really and there was none of that and it was it was almost like a family member had died and no one knew what to say. Really? And so they wouldn't, yeah, they wouldn't approach me. I'd see them see me and then think, oh, and, and I don't blame them. It's 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 hard because you don't know what to say maybe to someone who's yeah. not made the team. But to that, I'd say I'm still the same person. Mm -hmm. I just didn't make a team. And it doesn't help then with with mental health and and feeling like do I have support do they support me or do they just like me when I'm doing well or got a GB flag on my top or whatever and so I think that's that probably didn't help in a lot of respects because then I heard nothing really and that's that's really difficult and I think some somewhere that needs to improve massively in swimming again we can only sport talk for swimming um but yeah, there's, there wasn't any support for me. And I don't know what it's like now. I can't talk for now because I'm not involved anymore. But I think it's it's great because everyone's there for you when you're doing really well and doing mm -hmm. personal bests and getting medals and stuff like that. And then, But then on the flip side, when you're not doing that, there's not really anything. And it's so important to have something to not go into depression and stuff like that. Um, so I think there's, there's huge, huge uh, improvements that need to be made. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. I think that it is better, but I think that it's still got a long way to go. Um, previous episodes, guys, if you're listening, um, I spoke with Jeffrey Webster, who's a performance psychologist. He touched on a little bit of a similar thing. Um, but also I spoke to uh, one of the heads of England Rugby, um, that episode is really interesting, guys, if you want to listen a little bit more into that. Um, so you've touched on Quigley Sport. Yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that is, what you're doing now? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'd love to. Um, whilst I'm sat here in my Mickey Mouse jumper, I realise it's <laughs> a podcast so people can't see, but Sophie can appreciate it. Um, yeah, Quigley Sport was something that started out as something I'd call I don't know what um, <laughs> and it, it's it's been great really to develop and grow with it because I always wanted to be involved in swimming in some respect other than that 2016 where I hated it 
um every every other moment outside of that i've wanted to be involved uh, and help in some way um, and i love helping in the pool and the technique and all that sort of stuff you know that's that's brilliant but it's something that well i always wanted to help with the mental side of it as well because again we've talked about how important it is and i don't feel like there's enough people out there that are trying to help on that side yeah maybe agree. there is and I just haven't looked hard enough but <laughs> I don't necessarily think you should have to look hard mm-hmm. um so so yeah so it started out as like a let's see what this develops into and um I have a series called the core room where we get athletes on and talk about their highest lowest moments and stuff like that similar to what you're doing but deeper than that I started a mentoring program um because I think the support system around athletes is great but I think having a mentor it maybe adds something different to what a psychologist could could add psychologists don't get me wrong are phenomenal but um I think the mentor brings a side of empathy which I look back at my career and think maybe if I'd have had a mentor someone who had been through the same or similar uh, that could talk me through how they dealt with it or, you know, just so I knew I wasn't on my own feeling those things. Um, and, and just someone to help guide me, motivate me a bit when maybe I needed it. Um, so I've got a mentoring programme and then working with Jazz Carlin um, to do swim camps and school visits and stuff like that. And and again, touching on, you know, mental health in a hopefully a positive and, <clears throat> sorry, hopefully a positive and helpful way um so yeah so i'm just trying to figure out the 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 best way for me to help the next generation or even you know people older or or just starting the swimming or whatever that is um and and helping it to be a more positive experience yeah i think that's amazing um and the other thing that i think is absolutely amazing about what you're doing now is you've not totally left the pool even though in 2016 gosh that's four years ago now even though four years ago you didn't even want to be there you've still stayed around the pool so what are you what are you doing now in terms of sport well I'd love to say I'm in the pool but lockdown two is oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) um in between lockdown one and lockdown two for some reason I challenged my best mate Hannah to do 100 hundreds freestyle and thought well I can't challenge her not do something myself so I decided to do 10,000 metres IM as uh, 10 fours, 10 threes, 10 twos, 10 ones. So that's that's enough for me this year, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no, I mean, I, yeah, I love it. I, I, I love swimming. I lost the fire to race, um, definitely. Um, but I did go away. I mean, I went to Liverpool after 2016. I worked with a coach called Mike Roberts, who was fantastic um, for me at that time he he got me to love swimming again and you know he just he was just great in in general um supported me in the absolute best way that i needed um for sure so i'll always be hugely grateful to mike and then lucky enough got the opportunity to go to lanzarote with robin brew um and again just loved it i mean how can you not in the sun get a nice tan um, and I trained with his sons, Tom and Jamie, and I just loved it. We swam for a, um, a Spanish club, Parma, um, which again is random because I was in Lanzarote, but I was racing for Parma. <laughs> and it was just, it was so nice to get out of the British scene mm-hmm. and to race. I knew some of the Spanish girls from just racing, you know, around the world, yeah. but it was super, I was I mean, Palmer was so lovely and welcomed both Jamie and I and Tom. And again, yeah, just had fun and didn't overthink it. And just, it was nice to get back in the pool and push myself in training, but not to the point where I was, when I was in the UK, more of like a fun, what can we do today sort of challenge, really. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, mixed with other things now, like, you know, uh, on the bike, swifting. Uh, we're going to be doing some stuff together, I'm sure. But um, yeah, doing a bit of cycling, a bit of running with Mark Botham, who, which has been fantastic. So it, again, it's something that, I, I mean, I'd love to do an Ironman. I've said it out loud. So yeah, I know, hold me to it. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to do an Ironman at some point. 
um and and so yeah i you know i i've always wants them to be in my life and it's such a shame that so many athletes finish and retire and hate it and never want to do it again and don't get in the pool for years i i can't imagine that um and i'm glad that i've not gone down that way mm -hmm. Yeah, you literally just took the words out of my mouth. I was just about to say it's such a shame that so many people retire and never touch the water again. Um, but it's so refreshing to see that you're still interested in having a race every now and again. And I can think of worse places to do an Ironman than Lanzarote. Um, <laughs> I can definitely think of worse places. Um, <laughs> I think you've definitely chosen the right place to be. <laughs> would, would you be in for an Ironman in a few years with me? Oh, you put me on the spot here, maybe. <laughs> maybe down the road. I need to sort yeah, my... down the road. Hey, look, down the road, but I can wait for you. That's fine. <laughs> 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 um, so my next question would be, what would be the biggest bit of advice that you would give to little Lauren? I mean, it's cliche and I used to hate it when people used to say it to me um, when I was younger and I was laughing about this with my brother Grant the other day, but enjoy it and just enjoy every moment and, and take the good with the bad. The, the bad helps you more than the good does. Uh, and just, I think, trust yourself a bit more. In swimming, we're, and we're forced to mature but also kept very young at the same time. We're very reliant on coaches to tell us what to do all the time. And we don't really, um, you know, trust our own instincts, I suppose, in the end. At the start, yes, you need a lot of guidance, of course, but when you get older, it's like, trust yourself a bit more. I think that's really important and how you feel, you know, the coaches, the coach knows you very well, but not more than you know yourself. And so it's about, you know, trying to have that great relationship with a coach. But yeah, I think 100% first thing I say to everyone is enjoy it. It's, uh, it's a journey that's fantastic. And yes, you are tired 99% of the time and don't actually appreciate the journey until you're probably out of it. But it's, it's seriously one of the best things you'll ever do. I think that's amazing advice. I love it. I love that you've went for the cliche, but not cliched it. Um, yeah, I try not to. But <laughs> <laughs> so my next question for you is what's next for you? Well, Iron Man with you, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, What's next? That's a great question. And something that I've probably not thought too much about, like I said, with Quigley Sport, I just started it. And yeah. people would say to me, what is it? And I'd go, well, I'm not actually that sure. <laughs> well, go and follow it. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I just want to keep, well, I want to try and inspire, uh, help guide, motivate, uh, do some great stuff with, with collaborations with people. You know, this stuff with jazz, I'm really looking forward to what's going to come from that. Um, and just, yeah, I don't know, help motivate the next generation and, and, be a mentor that I never necessarily had. And I think one thing I'd like to, I would like to say is that um, when I speak to, to people or like even I think the first time we spoke, one of the first things you said was, you know, I've not got to your level mm -hmm. or I never got to the level that you got to. Or even before you said, I never had that pressure of um, Olympic trials yeah. or whatever. And it, I, I would love to say to that, it does not matter whether you're uh, club champs or you're at the Olympics, it's the same feelings, the same emotions, uh, the same amount of pressure, maybe more depending on who you are. Um, and it doesn't matter what level you get to, it's your own journey. It's just as important as everyone else's. And you're putting your body through the same stresses, the same emotions. And so it, it's important whether you're Olympic champion or learning to swim. And it's just, again about enjoying that journey and not um not belittling your achievements or anything just because someone else has got a medal or a record or whatever yeah definitely i 100 percent agree with you on that i think that's amazing what you just said it's really refreshing to listen to the way that you talk about 
swimming but also the mental side of it I think that it's quite exciting for me especially with Covid happening I think a lot of more swimmers are looking to more aspects they're not just looking to the pool because obviously that was taken away would you agree on that? Yeah I think uh, this year has been obviously this year has been an insane year and we've had a lot taken away from us for sure and it's and it's not been easy and I suppose the uh, the escape of being able to train obviously has been taken away and I've I've named it in my own head sort of the thinking year I think people have been forced to think and face things that they may never have faced in their life in terms of a mental from a mental uh, standpoint and yeah it's been a huge it's been a huge year of maybe learning about ourselves as well and and how to deal with things outside the pool and then hopefully apply them when we can all get back in it's uh it's been important to to as well to focus on the things outside of the pool um i mean don't get me wrong it's been awful not being able to swim i'd love to i look at the bath every day and i think wow, hello hello <laughs> um but yeah it's been it's also been a a positive year you you know it's got to try and look at things positively as as best you can and yeah you you're absolutely right it's it's been a year of thinking and it's been a year of figuring out you know we've just watched isl and it's been world record after world record in the last the last week or so and it's like this that should give inspiration to people of like yes okay maybe those guys have trained a bit more than the general public um or the younger swimmers or whatever squads you're, you're in um but at the same time they will have had time out the water and will have been forced to do other things on land and and mentally and stuff like that and if you're ever going to start working on your mental state and and how you deal with things it's definitely now uh, now is the time when you can't actually do anything other than that yeah I totally agree and for non-swimming listeners the ISL is um, basically making swimming a little bit more exciting a little bit more TV-able if that's a word um, and yeah you can catch up on it on BBC iPlayer that's where I watched it um, but it is so refreshing to see world records going left right and center even though we have gone through such a such a hard time um so my last question i always ask this question if anybody's listening heard me present before you know what question i'm about to ask um so let's pretend we live in an alternate universe where you're allowed to have a dinner party Oh. You're allowed to invite three people and they can be past or present. Who would you invite and why? Ooh. Um, I feel like, I feel like, cause I'm always the one asking the questions. I don't ever really think of answers that I'm going <laughs> to um, for myself. That's a, that's a good question. Um, I think I'd love to have, um, and this again, I'm really sorry it's cliche, but I'd love to have Phelps at mm-hmm. a dinner party. Um, I've met him once and I was so starstruck. It was a lot, it was years ago and I, we were in the hotel and we, he went up to the buffet uh, to get his lunch. I just followed him, just put, <laughs> plate. I just put on mine. I like a little bit of that, a little bit of that. <laughs> by the end of my plate was like this. And I was like, so, <laughs> please <laughs> um i'd love to yeah so i'd love to speak to phelps because i mean he's gone through the highest uh-huh. and the lowest i probably you know can imagine um oh you know what that's a really tough question and i'm sure when this is over i'll be thinking yeah oh, i'll yeah. get a message off you like tonight <laughs> yeah um do you know what that's I can't even think right now. <laughs> I just have me and Phelps at this rate. Um, <laughs> you, Phelps, Bob Bowman, and the little no, one. <laughs> no, Bob can be on his own for a minute. <laughs> um, hmm. 
you've really put me on the spot. <laughs> I have to edit this out of the podcast because it's just going to be sat here for too long. In the uh, meantime, while you have a think, um, where can people find you on social media? Uh, they can find me uh, at Quigley Sport. That's the one that's um, a load of fun with a lot of honesty and, and a roller coaster of a journey. Uh, they can find me uh, or at Lauren A. Quigley, which is um, just my own personal account that's full of lots of laughter and fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so they can find me there. I'm, I'm all over somewhere. You'll find me in the depths of whatever app you're on, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Probably there'll be some embarrassing stuff down there as well, but just ignore that. Um, but yeah, no, Quigley Sport is the main one. That's where I'm trying to make uh, some positive change uh, within the sporting world. So yeah, with in terms of the dinner date, you, you're going to have to. If you go to my um, Twitter, I will put a tweet out with oh, the. There we go. Because I just can't even think. Right now. <laughs> I don't want to to waste my other two guests. So. <laughs> it'll be up there amazing well thank you so much for coming on the show um for anybody listening you'll know where to find us if you're already listening but you can find us on youtube spotify all of the usual social media platforms please be sure to give this video a like if you're watching on youtube like share do all that fun stuff um and thank you so much lauren for coming on yeah, no, thanks for having me. It's been uh, it's been great fun. Normally it's me asking the questions, so it's quite nice <laughs> to be answering and talking your ears off. But no, seriously, if uh, whoever is watching, do carry on following Sophie because she's doing some uh, some awesome well, stuff and it's you. great to see. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for listening, guys. Yeah.